This reporter has been working on a story about me for two years. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions, demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. Are you kidding me? LSU coach Kim Mulkey is clearly feeling the heat. It was just an attempt to prevent me from commenting and an attempt to distract us from this tournament. It ain't gonna work, buddy. Unfortunately, this is part of a pattern that goes back years. I told this reporter two years ago that I didn't appreciate the hit job he wrote on Brian Kelly. And that's why I wasn't going to do an interview with him. Good sourcing and sound reporting is not a hit job, coach. Onward. Former players have told me that the Washington Post has contacted them and offered to let them be anonymous in a story if they'll say negative things about me. The Washington Post has called former disgruntled players to get negative quotes to include in their story. They're ignoring the 40 plus years of positive stories that, that people or they have heard from people about me. But you see, reporters who give a megaphone to a one-sided embellished version of things aren't trying to tell the truth. They're trying to sell newspapers and feed the click machine. This sounds a lot like this. You've said repeatedly that you think that some of the equipment that governors are requesting, they don't actually need. You said New York might need, I, not, I might not need 30,000. You said it on I Sean Hannity's Fox News. You said you know, that why you might- Why don't you some, people act? Let, let me ask you. You said why some don't state, you act? Why don't you act in a little more positive? It's always trying to my get question you, to you, get is, you, get you. And you know what? That's why nobody trusts the media anymore. My That's question why to you people, is, how is that going to impact? Excuse me, you didn't hear me. That's why you used to work for The Times, and now you work for somebody else. Look, let me tell you something. Be nice. Don't Mr. Be President, threatening. my question Don't is... Don't be threatening. Playing defense through unfounded attacks over and over again. This is exactly why people don't trust journalists and the media anymore. It's these kinds of sleazy tactics and hatchet jobs that people are just tired of. I'm fed up and I'm not gonna let the Washington Post attack this university, this awesome team of young women I have, or me without a fight. Ah yes, more attacking of the media. Easy target, well done. I've hired the best defamation law firm in the country, and I will sue the Washington Post if they publish a false story about me. Not many people are in a position to hold these kind of journalists accountable, but I am, and I'll do it. Kind of a threat there from Mulkey. Mike Sando of The Athletic would see this and write, sometimes a reporter before publication presents a non-cooperative subject like Kim Mulkey with a questions list, at which point the subject gains understanding of scope rather than answer. Sometimes threats are made, usually privately, as last recourse. Powerful people equals used to getting their way. In addition, the reporter who said she did a hit piece on Brian Kelly, it was an article about the harsh financial conditions in the state of Louisiana. That article juxtaposed Brian Kelly, football coach, his massive salary against the harsh financial conditions that Baton Rouge's residents and LSU students face. That's a ridiculous thing to defend and not a hit piece in the slightest. That dude was spitting facts. In turn, likely, it made Coach Mulkey that much more unrelatable. What Coach did was the opposite for many. She's giving free promotion to an article many probably would have ignored. Jason McCallum would tweet, whatever this is, the one thing I'm absolutely certain of is that the Washington Post is completely unafraid of this insane basketball coach and any threats of a lawsuit. They took down a president of the United States one time. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Sports Network. Kim, obviously not the starts that you guys wanted today. Just wanted to ask if externally, if you guys felt like you maybe were distracted a touch and, and just talk about how your team was able to, to just weather that, that early start. 
No, listen, man, I'm not, we're not going to let one sleazy reporter distract us from what we're trying to do. Absolutely not. My kids didn't even know I said that yesterday. That team's not involved in this. They were in shock when they saw all that on the internet. I don't take that stuff to my team. She'd then say this after LSU's win, controversially, over Middle Tennessee. Hilariously, the reporter would later identify himself with this tweet and would write a two-word caption that read, hit piece? All right, I got a lot to say here. But before we get into it, if there are any stories we missed, if there are any that you would like to submit, get at me and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, DMs are open. And please, if y'all can, support the channel, become a channel member, and or go to tyt.com slash join. Let's just go over a few things because we have covered Kim Mulkey here and we have gone over her mishaps. Everyone has them. The problem is hers are just terrible mishaps to the degree that they are not only unrelatable, but you cannot defend them. So I just want to go over a few things that we heard. I took a few notes because this is really blown up, but I believe the correct context has not been met. So the first thing is she is reading a statement, which is something she never does. You have to understand if you, if you followed women's so how insane this is. She's the coach that's like, I shoot from the hip and I tell it like it is and I'm going to MF you if I have to. Like, she will never read a prepared statement. So the fact that she did is eye-opening. Secondly, she says that it is a hit piece. If someone is working on a story for two years, here's what I know. It ain't a hit piece. It's good journalism. It's good sourcing. And to get into that, by the way, saying that she had no time to respond, I find that to be interesting because she opened up that very same sentence by saying, this reporter has been trying to interview me for two years. <laughs> so what it sounds like is you kept putting off this person for two years. And now that the piece is finally going to come out after they presented you, since you wouldn't get back to them and let them interview you with a list of questions, you might have an understanding of where they're coming from. Though she also may not. We haven't seen the article yet. We don't know what deets are in there, but this is a woman and Better yet, any person who comes out in this way after putting off meeting with this media person for that many years and then saying we had no time to respond. Bro, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You had 24 months to meet the moment. And now that you feel like the walls are caving in, you're trying to play the victim. And this is not a person who ever um, will not fire back. But she is doing it now as a last ditch effort. She also said this on sourcing, saying former players contacted me about the story, granting anonymity. Yeah. Yeah, that, because look at your response before the story came out. I believe people would be granted the condition of anonymity for fear of retribution, for fear of what you will do to their career. Clearly, it is clear. If anyone crosses you, they are cooked. So out of anything, she's giving credence to people wanting anonymity. On top of this, I wrote a few notes on this as well. Let's go over some sourcing. It's not that allowing uh, anonymity is for a negative story. It's granting anonymity if they aren't comfortable putting their name on it for what you'll do to them. In addition, you're showing what many don't understand, the ethics of journalism. She's attempting to paint this all as fake news. It's a hoax. They're writing a story on me and granting anonymity because they're making it up. That's not true. In addition... It goes to show on the surface of the ethics of journalism. It goes to show Mulkey and all of her defenders don't have a clue 
what it takes to get a story to print. Let me speak on that as well. The Washington Post has lawyers reviewing all of this. They have fact checkers reviewing all of this. Why? Because a lawsuit would open them up to not only financial damages, but credibility. It has to be bulletproof in order to go to print. And it probably is. So it just goes to show a lot. And we've talked about the mishaps previously, right? We've talked about how she was very evidently, clearly sick in a press room. And she ended her press conference by saying, sorry if y'all get sick from me. I ain't testing for COVID. So if you go home to your families over Thanksgiving, get them sick, you can blame me. Ha, ha, ha. That was bad. When during the NCAA tournament, coming to a close a few years ago, she was playing with her mask intentionally to make it seem like it was the worst thing to ever happen to her. And then she said, even if players contract COVID, they should just be playing. It doesn't matter who they get sick. It doesn't matter who they take out in society where we've lost a million, millions of people. It doesn't matter. She just wants people playing no matter what. She said that it was unfair to the kids which is a ridiculous thing to say, knowing how deadly it is. She mandated, according to a report, that her players go visit the Trump White House, which was also pretty eye-opening. Um, she has... Uh, there's a report that she told Brittany Griner to keep her sexuality private. The argument can be made that, according to the school handbook of Baylor, that it is... Uh, wrong for someone to be gay on campus when there was a huge essay scandal involving Baylor's football program when Art Bryles was the head coach. She went in front of a home crowd at one of their games and said, if anybody tells you they're not going to send their kid to Baylor, you punch them in the face. She later apologized for that remark. But it was very clear what her intent was. In addition, when Brittany Griner was detained in Russia, she refused to say anything about it. This is a player that helped win her national championships and elevate her to the spotlight of women's college hoops and basketball overall. And she didn't say a single word for Brittany Griner. Not one. Let me also say this. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have learned through how we have covered the Brett Favre Mississippi case. If she sues for defamation, she is opening herself up to discovery. I sincerely doubt that she would want to do such a thing. 